Oh, yes. Paul said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. My brothers and sisters, I don't have to remind you that last week was a trying week for so many of our families, our friends and our neighbors and for this nation and even in this world. We are seeing some dark times and yet we still have joy. As a nation prepared to eulogize and celebrate the life and legacy of an American politician and civil rights leader who served in the United States House of Representatives for Georgia's fifth congressional district from 1987 until his death in 2020, John Robert Lewis. I'm reminded of his final words. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something. You have to do something. Find a way to get in trouble. Good trouble. Necessary trouble. I'm reminded this morning of another man. They called him a troublemaker. But it was good trouble. It was necessary trouble. And death has become a familiar enemy. COVID-19 is showing up in our homes and communities as an unwanted guest. Unemployment rises as benefits expire. Millions face threat of eviction from their homes. The threat of taking away health care and voting rights while we are still chanting Black Lives Matter. Good trouble, but necessary trouble. And as a mother, my heart breaks to think that our immigrant children are carted out in the middle of the night, taken down to unknown hotels without their parents and in the hands of strangers. And if this information is correct, I am appalled with righteous anger. Bigotry is out of control. Racism continues to rise. Police brutality and violence has taken over our streets. A time when we are uncertain when our children will return to school and church doors will reopen. These are perilous times. Fake news has brought with it a gagging and galling uh, ignorance in leadership at the highest level while promoting authoritarian impulses that can be the undoing of our democracy, our government, and our way of life. And yet, the undisputable truth is this. Hear me today. Mr. Trump is not the issue. The issue is whether we shall continue to be consistent with the principles of our faith in God that has brought us thus far on the way. Do you think that in this country the only thing we need to worry about is Donald Trump? He is not the issue. Let's not forget that God has the authority and the power to place who he wants to occupy that over office. Donald Trump is there for one purpose and one purpose only. To expose how sick this nation is and how much we need a savior. Come on, church. We, we need a redeemer. We need somebody to go out of bail. We need help. And I know this is not a pie-in-the-sky message, and neither should it be. Time is shifting. Things are getting worse unless we get up, dust ourselves off, and get back in the race. And I believe today that God has placed people of color at this pivotal point of social history to determine once and for all if we will be serious at changing
change agents, or will we be content to return back to the Egyptian plantations of slavery? I believe, if you be honest with us, the truth is we have abandoned the word of God to the point that in this generation, there's a sense of rejection and persecution for those who dare to claim the name that is above all other names. The barefoot Palestinian rabbi hung among the criminals on Calvary's rugged hill. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. He was the way. So, so, so John Lewis is saying, get in the way. Come on, somebody. Tr tr trouble is a good trouble. Necessary trouble. And it makes no sense that Israel does not know. Nor has Israel figured out yet who it is that puts butter on her bread. Israel has forgotten who makes a way out of no way. And it looks as though Israel, Minister Lucas, is not interested nor acquainted with the God who bears the government on his shoulders. We have no clue about the one who made crooked places straight and rough places plain. If only our people wanted to know that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. If only we could get that. And God is saying, my children have rebelled against me. They have betrayed me. In other words, he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and pray, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. What I think is that the whole state of affairs within our communities is a reflection of the very judgment of God. Everybody, whether the case is stated, are trying to figure out what is life all about. Is this struggle real? I think I ought to tell you this morning that you will misread life if you think that life is a picnic. You will re uh, misread life if you think life is a party. I'll tell you what life is. Life is a struggle. That is what it is. It is a struggle. It's a struggle from the time we were born until the time we die. Job 14, 1 said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. But it's a good struggle. It's a necessary struggle. And that's why some of y'all can't say amen right now. Because it's a struggle. That's why some of y'all out there can't wave your hands right now. Because it's a struggle. But let me remind you, it's a good struggle. It's a necessary struggle. Friends, I need to tell you that you will never understand life until you see it as a struggle. And this is why some folk are having a difficult time with this social distancing, wearing a mask and washing their hands. It's a struggle. But can we all agree that it's a necessary struggle? A struggle that is tied in with our capacity to suffer. Some days good, some days bad. It's all a struggle. But friends, you can make it. This is only a test. And, and the reason I know it is because we have the victory in the midst of this struggle. Because of the treasure that God has put in earthen vessels. 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then you go to Apostle Paul's letter to all who be in Rome. Romans 8, 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We have the indwelling presence of God. Paul says in our text, we are troubled on every side. 
He says, when I look to the left, there's trouble. When I look to my right, there's trouble. Even in front of me, there's trouble. And even in the back of me, there's trouble. But Paul goes on to say that we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. Because we still have a hope. And our hope is in Jesus Christ. That, my friends, is a good struggle. A necessary struggle. And I've discovered that you don't have to find good trouble because good trouble will find you. Can I get some help here? Isn't it amazing how trouble will drive down your street? Someone said, back up in your driveway, get out of this vehicle, walk right in your house without even knocking. You don't even have to find trouble because trouble will find you. Come on, somebody. And, and, and the second thing I notice about Paul's good troubles is that God does his best work. In the midst of trouble. Can I tell you what I'm talking about? America's Pharaoh sent a decree to kill all the male child. But God had a plan for Moses' life. And God goes onto the backside of the desert, find Moses, and speak to him in a burning bush. And he tells Moses to take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. He says, Moses, before I tell you something, he said, I already prepared you for this day. Come on, somebody. He said, you remember when Pharaoh sent the decree to kill all the male children? I let your mama hide you. <laughs> it was your mama. It was me that put you in a bulrush basket, set you down a Nile River, and allowed the wind to blow you from the north to the south to the east and the west. You blow right in front of Pharaoh's daughters. Uh, and Pharaoh's daughter uh, called your sister named Miriam to fetch you out of the water. And then they made your mother your housekeeper. Come on, somebody. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And he said, I allowed you to live with Pharaoh. For you to learn the ways of the Egyptian. And then he said that one day he saw an Egyptian beating on a Hebrew and he killed that Egyptian. And yet still, even though he was on a run for his life, God knew where he was. And he said, and then you went on the backside of the desert. And I had you on parole for 40 years. But now I'm talking to you. I'm telling you, Moses, to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Yes, sometimes you got to learn good trouble. Is necessary trouble. And, and then when you learn how to fight for God and with God, you, you got to learn how to win with God and for God. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to win. See, see, Joshua guided them across the Jordan River. And when Moses had Joshua and told him to go out and spot out the land, he and Caleb was the only one that came back with a good report. And God spoke to Joshua just like he spoke to Joshua then. He's still speaking to us. He said, Joshua, what I want you to do, for six days, I want you to walk around the city. For one day at a time, he said, but on the seventh day, somebody say the seventh day, I want you to walk around six times, and on the seventh day, I want you to tell them to blow the trumpets. And when they blow the trumpets, and the people began shouting, the wall, I said the wall, I said the wall, I said the wall started coming down and I need to tell you that the walls didn't come down because they waited to give God some praise when the walls came down but they gave God some praise before the walls came down and sometimes in the midst of your struggle you have to learn how to give God some praise yes Jesus does some of his best work in the midst of your trouble but I need to hope, encourage you to hold on to your faith. God is on your side. Paul said again, we are perplexed, but not in despair. In other words, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And, and, and that is saying that we dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And you got to realize, my friends, that in the midst of your struggle, you can have victory. That is why Paul said to the church at Corinth, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my friends, I have to leave you now because I just stopped by to tell somebody that it's going, that's going through your troubles right now. Wherever you are right now, I need to tell you that troubles don't last always. Sometimes the devil tries to make us suffer from temporary amnesia. 
You see, sometimes the devil tries to make you think that God has not ever done anything for you. Come on, somebody. Ah, he will try to make you think that God has never brought you through anything. He will try to make you think that God is not a bridge that leans over troubled water. But will you take a trip down memory lane with me? Didn't he put food on your table yesterday? Won't my God do it today? Didn't he heal your body yesterday? Won't he heal you today? Didn't he step down when you were down to your last dime and gave you a nickel in your pocket? Won't he do it today? Paul said we are persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. And even though you are hurting, even though folk have been laughing in your face and talking behind your back, even though folk have told you that you'll never amount to anything, every, even though they told us that it will set us back 400 years, won't God make a way? Won't God make a way? Anybody know he's a heavy burden? A heavy load carrier, a heart fixer, and a mind regulator, a company keeper in your lonely hour. You can make it. This is just a test. Good trouble is necessary trouble. And as I get ready to take my seat, I must tell America, I must tell the church, God is still speaking to us. Our trouble is good trouble. It's necessary trouble because there is a life to be lived and work to be done. Hold on and don't you get weary. Don't you quit and don't throw in the towel. Hang on in there. How do you know Mary Hagin? Because I know a man that was called a troublemaker. Came down to 42 generations. Born in Bethlehem. Baptized in the Jordan, tempted in the wilderness, betrayed by one of his own. They led him up a mountain called Calvary and nailed him to a cross. And he died. And he died on that cross. So come on, somebody. He died until the sun set. He died until the graves vomited up their dead. But I'm so glad that this troublemaker, the story didn't end right then because early. Early, early, one Sunday morning, troublemaker got up, and nobody know how he got up, but he got up with all power in his hand, healing power, saving power, deliverance power, all power, all power, all power is in his hand, and that's why I can say, for I am persuaded that neither death, come on, Mary Hagin, nor life nor ages, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Find a way to get in good trouble. Good trouble is necessary good trouble is necessary.